Hello, my friends, and welcome to day 10 of reading the Gospels in 40 days. Today, we're going to read Matthew chapters 22 through 23. I will be reading from the World English Bible, which is a modern English translation. If you prefer to listen to the King James Version, I have a video of these chapters done with that version, and I will link that in the description below. All right, let's get started. Jesus answered and spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, who made a wedding feast for his son, and sent out to his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my cattle and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his merchandise, and the rest grabbed his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. When the king heard that, he was angry, and sent his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Go therefore to the intersections of the highways, and as many as you may find, invite them to the wedding feast. Those servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good. The wedding was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man who didn't have on wedding clothing. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here not wearing wedding clothing? He was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bring him, hand and foot, take him away, and throw him into the outer darkness. That is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. For many are called, but few chosen. Then the Pharisees went and took counsel on how they might entrap him in his talk. They sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are honest, and teach the way of God in truth, no matter whom you teach, for you aren't partial to anyone. Tell us, therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. They brought him a denarius. He asked them, Whose is this image and inscription? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and left him, and went away. On that day Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection, came to him. They asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. In the same way, the second also, and the third, to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like God's angels in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, haven't you read that which was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the multitudes heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But the Pharisees, when they heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. A second likewise is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think of the Christ? Whose son is he? They said, Of David. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word, neither did any man dare ask him any more questions from that day forward. 
Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. All things, therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, observe and do, but don't do their works. For they say, and don't do. For they bind heavy burdens that are grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not lift a finger to help them. But they do all their works to be seen by men. They make their phylacteries broad and enlarge the fringes of their garments, and love the place of honor at feasts, the best seats in the synagogue, the salutations in the marketplaces, and to be called Rabbi, Rabbi, by men. But you are not to be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and all of you are brothers. Call no man on the earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, the Christ. But he who is greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you devour widows' houses, and as a pretense you make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Because you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you don't enter in yourselves, neither do you allow those who are entering in to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel around by sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of Gehenna as yourselves. Woe to you, you blind guides who say, Whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. You blind fools! For which is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? And whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obligated. You blind fools! For which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gift? He, therefore, who swears by the altar, swears by it and by everything on it. He who swears by the temple, swears by it and by him who has been living in it. He who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God and by him who sits on it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have left undone the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But you ought to have done these, and not to have left the other undone, you blind guides who strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and unrighteousness. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and of the platter, that its outside may become clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitened tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tomb of the prophets, and decorate the tombs of the righteous, and say, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we wouldn't have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you testify to yourselves that you are children of those who killed the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you offspring of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna? Therefore, behold, I send to you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the sanctuary and the altar. Most certainly, I tell you, All these things will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I would have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left to you, desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me from now on, until you say, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you, my friends, for joining me on this reading journey. I'm so excited that you're here for day 10. We have 30 days to go. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon so you'll always be notified when new videos are posted. I'll be posting two videos a day until this reading is over because I post one in the World English Bible and one in the King James Version every day. I also have merch available if you're interested, um, and I have that linked in the description box below. I'm so glad that you're here with me, and I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow for day 11. Have a blessed day.